Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Town of Waukesha Town Board Meeting on February 26, 2015, beginning at 6.30 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order and begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. And Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Supervisor Durr? Here. Supervisor Fisher? Here. Chairman Merrick? Present. Supervisor Racky? Here. Supervisor Wolf? Here. And Madam Clerk, have we met all of the open meeting law requirements? Yes, we have. And we can begin then on citizens' comments. Good evening, Sandy Hom, West 230, South 3827, Milky Way Road. Um, everybody here knows what they've done or haven't done, but I wanted to go on the record and uh, say that I did send an email to everybody requesting a response on the 16th, and Supervisors 1 and 2 were courteous enough to respond, and no one else bothered to respond. Um, I think it it's very telling for those of us that are constituents when our representatives respond and when they don't. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? We'll move on. Approval of the meeting minutes from February 12th, 2015. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from February 12th, 2015. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to reports. Uh, we begin with the clerk treasurer. Uh, we finalized the uh, February election with 5% turnout of uh, our voting age population, which was 354 voters. Um, we started to prepare for the April 7th election. We have uh, public records requests. Uh, same one from last uh, last meeting, four-part request from Angie Van Sack uh, from uh, January 27th, uh, letters written to property owners in the town regarding noncompliance, emails between independent inspections and the town board about those noncompliance records, uh, billing records from independent inspections, all noncompliance reports. Uh, we received a... Um, uh, a public records request from Jason Emmer requesting uh, who filed his non-compliant uh, and I have not responded to that at this point. Um, Sandy Hamm uh, requested uh, to Supervisor Fisher letters referring to last board meeting uh, between the discussion between uh, the city of Waukesha and the town uh, pertaining to water. The Village of Big Ben requested a copy of uh, the Fire Department Mutual Aid Agreement. Uh, Angie Van Sack requested uh, uh, emails from John Merrick's personal accounts and uh, David Van Sack, uh, same request from Brian Fisher. We did do the as asbestos testing that we talked about at the last meeting and um, we had the carpet tested, the carpet adhesive tested, the tile adhesive tested, and the tile. And the tile itself came out uh, as a positive. The other three did not. Uh, they did not find any asbestos or tile in the clerk's office itself, but there are some. there is some tile here, and we'll discuss that. Uh, I'll bring something forward next meeting. Okay. Um, our non-compliance, we have 13 properties that are still under non-compliance. One became compliant, one is working on a raise permit, one is working uh, with the staff to be placed on a plan commission agenda, nine properties have been served with citations, and one is in their first um, extension. Thank you, any questions for the clerk? And we can move on to the DPW report, Supervisor Durr. You have it in your packet. Um, bulk of our work in January was uh, snow plowing 210 hours for that. 
uh, some vehicle repair, which mostly had to do, I should say maintenance slash repair, had to do around the maintenance of snow plows and hydraulic lines and things of that nature. Uh, got a little bit of tree trimming done in January and a uh, little bit of mailbox repair. That was about it. Um, to date, we have um, taken delivery of just under 1,900 tons of salt. So that's 1,900 of our 2,000 ton. So probably not much concern um, of getting our full allotment. And uh, to date of that amount, we've used 766 ton. Uh, so I think we can anticipate that we'll have a substantial amount of surplus going in the next year, which should be good for budget planning. That's it. Excellent. Any questions? And we can move on to the finance reports. Very quickly, um, Clerk Treasurer Nicholas and I continue to work with the town attorney and the town auditor on some of the details pertaining to developing the plan for managing the financial resources of the town of Waukesha, particularly as it relates to our capital plan. Uh, nothing further to report tonight. There will be more information and details forthcoming in future meetings. Thank you. And on to seven, new business discussion and possible action on the following. Uh, 2015 to 2017 operator's license for Jonathan Salinas uh, for the legend at Merrill Hills. I would make a motion that we approve the operator license for Jonathan Salinas. <clears throat> I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. On to be a new vendor, new vendor and purchase order policy. Clerk Nicholas. Uh, this came out of the audit. Uh, we, have, um, we have currently no policy when it comes to uh, what we do when we're using a new vendor. Uh, nowadays with uh, uh, people buying things over the internet, uh, phone buying over the phone, it's important um, to make sure that we go through and do a check. Um, I've run this through with the um, auditor and made sure that everything they were looking for in this um, policy is in place, uh, but I have not had the attorney review it. Uh, so if you wanted the attorney to review it, that would be the next step. Otherwise, approval is uh, also in order. Uh, the other portion of this is um, a purchase order policy, and that's to make sure that uh, we have someone that's actually doing a pur purchase order prior to purchasing. Um, it's just uh, making sure it's all written out and our employees know what we expect. Any questions? And we can move on to eight, current business, discussion and possible action on the following. Future direction on quiet zone designation for the crossings of Lonsdale, Oakdale Road, and Glendale Road. And Clerk Nicholas again. <laughs> um, I uh, wanted to just uh, start the discussion. Um, we have uh, a resident that's done a lot of work on, on this, Amanda, and um, I'm just looking uh, for some direction with the board if you want to continue. Um, the town has to take on the, the next step in this process. Uh, but um, the, what, I've, what we found at this point is each crossing has met the minimum requirements. So the minimum requirements are the lights, the uh, bars that come down, and then there's uh, another um, director that needs to be on there. We do meet those requirements. The next step is to have a diagnostic review done by the railroad. Uh, the county and DOT, um, it's actually a physical review to access the um, uh, crossing. And um, then uh, they, uh, they stated to me that this portion would not, uh, not be a cost to have them come out. Uh, there are costs associated with creating quiet zones. Uh, that first physical review is free. Notices have to be sent uh, usually uh, this is done by a consultant. Um, I spoke with uh, Chris Janelli, and he said his firm has done it without design work. Um, that cost is about $60,000 per crossing. Um, they were doing the work um, 
required to determine eligibility for the city of Pewaukee at about $12,000 per crossing. Um, we need to uh, definitely do channelization, which uh, is a cost, and um, we have to put up no horn signs if we get that far. But I just uh, wanted direction from the board um, or if a board member wanted to take lead. Just a, a question, what I maybe didn't hear correctly, what did you say Mr. Ginelli said anticipated cost could be? Um, without the design work, about 60000 per um, Without crossing. the design work, c construction work. Right. Per mm -hmm. crossing. That's, that's what his, his firm's done them before, and that's the, that would okay. be the high end to him, he said. Okay, thank you. But I thought I heard you say that we meet the minimum requirements. So right. how does that all... Right. Uh, if we well, meet the minimum requirements, what are we talking about? Yeah, and um, that we have to um, we have to do notices to the people. We have to um, do uh, um, traffic counts have to be done, and um, um, I'm not sure what else needs to be done. Uh, the uh, DOT person said usually a con uh, people contract for for the additional work. It's not something. That, um. A question: Do at the clerk's office or any of the other board members, do do we know um, we have one individual who has brought this to your attention? Uh, I mean, are there many individuals who express an interest or concern about that? Do we have any knowledge of that? At this point, I have had one person, the person that's been doing the work, but this work had been done. Um, in 2013, so prior to me getting here. So I'm not sure if a discussion happened at a, a previous board that um, uh, brought this to the attention. There's been about a handful that have contacted me. With regards to the extra costs, my understanding of the quiet, to make a quiet zone, it has to be the gates and the sides of the road have to be constructed in such a manner that it's absolutely impossible for a car to get around either through the gates or on the outside of the gates and through ditches or so forth. That's, that's, that's the costs that are going to be involved. Well, I get it, but then I don't understand why somebody's telling us we meet the minimum requirements. Um, the minimum requirements are the, the lights, the bar that comes down, and then there's, a, um, there's something in the track that, uh, that helps with the train as well. So those are the minimums. And, I guess that one piece that they were talking about is a very expensive piece because uh, the city of Pewaukee, um, they stopped their um, work uh, for eligibility when um, the cost of, of, of theirs it was going to be over 200000 for just getting the, um, the tracks ready. Perhaps when they said minimum requirements, were they referring to just for a, a horned crossing? Correct. That was just so then we could start the process. Um, if we needed extra pieces, then uh, they would know more when they get to do the physical review. So the physical review, which is not supposed to cost us anything, is um, uh, they come in and they actually see if the um, if the crossings are meet that minimum. On paper, they do. They have the three pieces that meet the minimum, but they have to come in and take a look at it. So do we want to give the clerk direction to continue on and, and get at least the physical review done? Well, I guess I would like to know what the definition of minimum requirements is. I mean, to me, minimum requirements mean you've done what's minimally required to have a quiet zone, not you meet the minimum requirements, but it's going to cost you another $60,000 per crossing. Those are two different things to me. Okay. No, I think what they mean is they have to check whether or not that can be considered for a quiet zone. There are certain ones that can't. And so to meet those minimum requirements to designate it as a quiet zone, it's met the three requirements that make it that. You still have to install the barriers and everything else, which is where the cost comes in. Are, is it your understanding, Supervisor Reddy, I mean, these minimum requirements you're talking about, are these components of the railroad 
system? Is that what the minimum requirements are? No, I believe it's from the DOT. Okay. Okay, and um, I did want to um, mention to you, um, our attorney had stated that we needed to proceed cautiously. One of his qu uh, clients had um, uh, gone too far and there was no return from not paying the extra fees to get, get the process going. So um, uh, he just wanted us to proceed with caution if we went in that direction. So do we have any direction for the clerk? Well, my opinion, unless I have a constituent that comes forward um, and explains it better as to their wants for this, I have no desire to pursue it for that cost. Anybody else? Let's move on to B. Presentation by DPW Department on long and short-term capital needs. Supervisor Durr. Do you have the lights? Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Somebody complained they took very long. What happened to my computer? It's been so long. So, uh, in attendance this evening is Terry Noli, our DPW supervisor. I appreciate him being here. He can, uh, <laughs> Just for the record. So as part of the capital budgeting process that we're trying to get our arms around a couple of weeks ago, a couple of meetings ago, the fire chief was here to talk about the condition of his apparatus and what he saw the needs um, both over the next three to five years and then even looking 20 years out. So what I have here for you tonight is kind of a summary of uh, the different vehicles that we have in the DPW their condition and kind of where we're going from here and what we might need. Uh, tonight we'll talk for the most part just strictly about uh, the vehicles that we have and a couple of pieces of equipment. There's probably two more chunks that we need to take a look at. Any building needs that we might have over the next 10 or 15 years and then uh, also uh, the condition of any major road work that we would have to do over the next couple of years. So tonight I will uh, just stick with the vehicles. So the first vehicle I have for you tonight is what we call truck number four. A lot of you have probably seen it around town. It's a 1997 Chevrolet pickup. Um, it's in reasonably good condition given the fact that it's a 1997 vehicle and has 179,000 miles on it. And quite frankly, for the most part, none of those miles are, are probably good miles. It spends a lot of time running around the town uh, probably not a whole lot of time on the open road uh, running back and forth on an interstate, which are generally better miles. It's got a 5.7 liter V8 engine in it. Um, neither the engine nor the transmission has had any significant work done on it, um, but still runs very, very good. Has a uh, seven and a half foot Western plow on it. Um, makes the vehicle, um, I won't say very good because it doesn't have a salter on it, but it, makes it a good uh, vehicle for a cul-de-sac cleanup after snowstorms, and also we use it for uh, um, plowing just around the town hall here. 
So really the only major concern we have with this vehicle is the number of miles on it. Um, that's kind of getting up there for anybody who has a, a pickup, you would uh, probably consider replacing that. Uh, the downside is, is the vehicle with that many miles is probably not worth a whole lot of money. So it's probably in the best interest of the town just to keep it um, and keep running it until we run into trouble with it, but it certainly has to be taken into consideration. Truck number 10 is the bigger, the larger of our two uh, road plows. It's a 1997 International 2554. Has 90,500 miles on it, about 6,500 hours of work with an 11, inch, uh, 11 foot plow on it. Has a nine inch uh, stainless steel salter. Um, it's a good solid vehicle. We don't have a whole lot of trouble with it. Um, it's really good on the main, oops, wrong button. Uh, it's really good on uh, doing mains and straightaways, so Big Bend Road, Glendale Road, Partridge, um, Shadow Ridge, roads like that. Uh, you can't really see it on this picture here, but this is a plow that has a large mount on the front, and it's a slightly bigger truck than the next one I'm going to show you. So it's really not handy for doing cul-de-sac cleanup. It's difficult to turn. Uh, in a tight circle and it doesn't have a real tight turning radius. Um, the other upside of this vehicle is it's a very good dump truck in the summer, has a uh, high weight capacity so we can do a lot of hauling of uh, asphalt dirt and those kinds of things. Uh, the next vehicle I have for you is the other uh, major plow that we have in the town. It's a 1996 GMC Top Kick, uh, only 54,000 miles. Uh, another good solid truck for us. Uh, runs well and we don't have too much trouble with it. Uh, this truck has a six inch salter on it, a good solid vehicle. And because this has a plow, you can't real see, really see it in this picture, but this has a plow that's uptight against the bumper. So it makes it very, very good for cleaning up cul-de-sac because it has a nice tight turn radius and it's just easier to maneuver. Any comments so far, Jerry? All right, keep me honest here. The next truck I have for you is what we call truck number five. It's a 2003 Chevrolet 3500 dump truck. Um, it's got a 6.0 liter V8 in it, 52,000 miles. Um, good solid vehicle, <coughs> newer than our number, uh, number of our other vehicles. Um, to me, the downside of this vehicle is that it's only a two wheel drive. Um, there's no salter on it and there's no plow on it. I'll get into a little bit of my thoughts on this vehicle, um, but I, I think we could do something with this, uh, maybe sell it and replace it with something that we could use in um, cul-de-sac cleanup and snow plowing and cleanup, uh, something uh, that would be four-wheel drive with a salter and a plow on it. I don't know that I would recommend putting a salter and plow on this vehicle because of the lack of the four-wheel drive. Uh, the, pro the vehicle probably has some good value left in it yet on the secondary market um, because of the mileage, and it's, it's a solid truck. We don't have any, any trouble with it to speak of. Truck number eight is probably our biggest concern in the town. It's our, our uh, bucket truck uh, used mostly for tree trimming. It's a 1988 Chevy C70, 6.0 liter V8. Uh, while the mileage is not real high and the hours are not very high, the 1988 portion has been a bit of a problem with us or for us. Uh, it's a 40-foot bucket truck. Uh, one of the issues that we're going to start running into is uh, bucket trucks are supposed to be certified once a year, um, both the truck and the tower portion of it. Um, and as a truck gets to be 20, 25 years old, uh, most certification agencies will not uh, certify them after that amount of time. Um, we had significant trouble with this truck uh, over the past year and put about $6,000 in maintenance costs in it. So this is one that I think we should really look hard at uh, what we wanna do moving forward with the bucket truck. Uh, that's about the end of our trucks. I'll move into our tractors here. We have a 1998 John Deere that's both uh, a backhoe and a front end loader. Uh, use this quite a bit around the yard uh, in the winter. We use it to uh, load salt and things of that nature. Um, no significant issues with it. Uh, good solid uh, vehicle for us, 3,700 hours and um, 
no real immediate need to address this truck at all. The next tractor we have is a little smaller. We use this primarily for lawn, lawn cutting, ditch cutting. It's a 1992 John Deere 2555. It's got a seven foot turner side and rear flail mower. Uh, so this is the mower that we use for cutting a lot of our weeds and in ditch mowing. Um, and we're currently right now under in the process of having the mower head being rebuilt. Uh, that'll be a real boon for us, a uh, very reasonable price. Um, and that will take care of not having to replace both that and then all of the hyd hydraulics associated with it. Um, this tractor doesn't get a lot of use, so there's really not any real maintenance concerns with it. And we don't expect it to be a problem for us over the next couple of years. Uh, this is another tractor that we have. <coughs> it's a 1998 Kubota. Uh, it's only got we have a couple attachments for it. A front sweeper, a mower king, a scraper blade, and a pre-seater. Uh, no real concerns with this vehicle either. Um, this is our es excavator. Um, it's a 1985 uh, Gradol. It's got 4,600 hours on it. Uh, we use this for some ditching on our larger ditching projects. It uh, doesn't get a whole lot of use. Uh, I think there should probably be some serious thought about selling it. Uh, I don't know how much we would get for it. Uh, 1985, it's got some significant age on it, even though I'm convinced that 1985 was only 10 or 15 years ago. I have a hard time getting people to believe that anymore. So, um, But uh, we just don't get a whole lot of use out of it. How many times do you think you've used that this year, Jerry? I don't think we hardly use it at all. Well, if we need it, it's really And that's the other downside is that. Yeah, that's discussion for another time. But. Um, then a few other more minor pieces of equipment that we have. Um, this, uh, this up here is a Kubota 72-inch front mower. Uh, that's the mower we primarily use to mow around the town hall, so the park next door. Um, that runs pretty well for us. We don't really have many issues with that. It's got a little over 1,200 miles or 1,200 hours on it. Uh, this dark picture here is of our wood chipper, and that's a fine piece of equipment. Uh, we don't have any trouble with that. And then finally, we have this 20-foot uh, trailer down here, tandem axle trailer. Uh, one of the things that the uh, DPW could really use would be a smaller trailer. Um, I think you can, only, you can only haul this trailer with the larger truck, is that right? Or you can haul, haul it with both trucks. But they have expressed, expressed an interest in... Uh, a smaller trailer. Uh, we use this trailer for a lot of our culvert work when we have to haul culverts around and stuff like that. <coughs> so that's uh, um, all of the major equipment that we have. Um, this here is a little dark, but uh, I kind of laid out what I thought we were going to need over the next couple of years. In 2015, or you could slide these all out a year, I think, make 2015, 16, and 2016, 17. But in 2015, uh, as I mentioned, I think we should give some thought and consideration as a board about maybe selling the dump truck and replacing it with uh, a used dump truck again with a salter and a plow that's a four-wheel drive. Um, one of the things we've been experimenting with <coughs> this season, uh, this snow season, is kind of dispatching our, uh, our snow contractor when it comes to cul-de-sacs. And um, Jerry and Scott have been doing a lot of the cul-de-sac work, especially on these smaller snowfalls uh, the day after the snowfall. Um, we typically have our contractor go through just once around, um, and there's really some significant money there significant money that can be saved 
in, in working uh, in that process. Um, there are 60 cul-de-sacs in the town and uh, they take time to clean up. And right now we're paying our snowplow contractor $120 an hour a truck. Um, so I think if we would supplement some of our fleet uh, with trucks that we could more use for cul-de-sac cleanup, I think it might be a wise investment, a wise capital investment. So I think that's uh, some, something we should give some thought to about selling that and then replacing it with um, a different vehicle. I put a cost on that replacement cost of $45,000. I didn't offset that with uh, the value that we might get out of the vehicle because uh, I really, frankly, didn't know what we would get out of it. Um, the next thing I have here uh, to take a look at uh, replacing is the bucket truck that I talked about. Um, the folks over at Duco and now Telic um, say that we could probably get a reasonable used uh, uh, bucket truck, a little larger than the one that we have with a 50 or 55 foot reach, which would be much better uh, for doing the tree trimming that we do for about $60,000. And then we've talked about and already approved uh, $60,000 for a, what you would consider a DPW patrol truck. So it would be uh, another truck that's similar to truck number 10 or truck number six. So a full blown road plow. Uh, the board has approved up to $60,000 for that. Uh, we haven't found the right truck for the right money and the right equipment. Um, but we have had discussion about that over the past three months or so. Um, so that's that line item right there, and I, I just put in the $60,000. So that comes to either this year or next year, about $145,000. Um, I think we should also consider adding, so in addition to replacing this, but adding another one-ton plow and salter to do the cul-de-sac work that I talked about. Um, we've talked off and on occasionally about taking in some more of our plow, uh, our plow work and rely less on our contractors. Gives us much better control over what's going on in the town. So um, I have that item on there and I have $45,000 for that. Uh, the next most critical thing in my opinion would be replacing the pickup, truck number four. That's the 179,000, 180,000 mile truck. Um, so th that would be outfitted again to do cul-de-sac work. Um, I think there's some real money to be saved uh, doing our own cul-de-sac work. It ties up a lot of our contractors' time. And then the next most critical trucks, and this is looking out a couple of years, would be the two current plows that we have. And then after that, I think we'd be in pretty good shape. I, I got our, our tractors listed here, but I didn't really put a definite time frame for replacement on them because I think you're looking out at least another five years on those. And we could kind of evaluate those on a yearly basis and start to make decisions as we look at our capital plan for the five and 10 year future, you know, year over year and make some decisions about whether we want to replace them. So with that, I'd be happy to entertain any questions and probably refer them all to Jerry. I've got one uh, quick question and maybe it is better for Jerry, but can you identify for us, uh, I'm particularly interested in the trucks even more so than the tractors, but which of those trucks, uh, if any of them did the town purchase new, if you know, or were all of those purchased used? Can, can you enlighten us, Jerry? And all of the rest of them were existing equipment. Thank you. So that one there. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and we can move on to nine paying the bills. We'll start with a authorize the payment of the Rukert Milky Bill for $579. Is there a motion? 
I'll make a motion. We pay the Rupert, Rupert Milky bill for $579. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And abstain? Aye. And on to B, authorized payment of the remainder of the bills in the amount of $172,431.84. Is there a motion? I move we pay the $172,431.84. Second? Second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And lastly, a motion for adjournment. I'll make the motion. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Have a good evening. <laughs>